Rabbit farming in Kenya is a growing business venture that is becoming popular due to increased demands of rabbit meat. The business is even more affordable to start as you will require very little investment. Rabbits are very fast growing animals like broiler chicken. They gain maturity fast and become suitable for slaughtering purposes within four to five months. This week, we had the pleasure of meeting Morina Farmer from Nyeri County, who was orphaned at a tender age, but is determined to beat all odds and has earned her space as one of the most visionary young entrepreneurs in Kenya. Her resilience and hard work has made her invest with over 600 rabbits. Join us as we journey with her on tonight's show. Welcome to today's episode of Kilimo na Biashara. Today we are in Nyeri County and as you can see, we will traverse all terrains to bring you different types of farming methods. Today, we want to bring you rabbit farming. So let's go to the farm. Jemo, Twende. Twende. Jamo, thank you so much. Nimeshkuru. Haya. Morin. Hi Linda. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh my god, I'm a fan. Kitchen to fork, kilimo na biashara. I'm impressed. Thank you so much. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you for allowing us to come to your farm. You're welcome. I had you one of the biggest rabbit farmers here. Not only am I the biggest in Yeri, but in the whole of Kenya. Really? Yes. I'm impressed. Twenty two and a half rabbits. Sasa, you're just down there. Say you kona ngapi? Six hundred and fifty. Imagine. Six hundred and fifty. Imagine. What? Yeah. Are they heavy feeders? Wana kula sana? They do because in a day I consume a full 50 kg bag. What? <laughs> Imagine. 50 kg? A yeah. day? Imagine. What? And you have to be constantly there? Yeah, you have to. For, for, and you must also be time conscious. Mm -hmm. yeah, so the rabbits are here. So Linda, before we enter the rabbit urine, mm -hmm. you must as in put a disinfectant here to, to disinfect your feet because outside here there's so much of bacteria and fungi oh, and everything okay. that affects the animals. Okay. Yeah, so we get the disinfectant. Mm -hmm. Then we disinfect. So you have to constantly yeah, this be we do. Yeah, this we do every day. As in every day, once we close as in rabbits, we have to, to disinfect. Then after oh. that, you can easily now get in. So Maureen, why is the place powdery? Uh, this powdery is agricultural lime, mm -hmm. as in we normally use it as in at the farm here because there's that smell of ammonia. Mm -hmm. So it tends to like absorb as in that smell and stuff, at least to keep the place well aerated mm -hmm. for the rabbits. Mm -hmm. oh. Yes, you know we also have industrial lime, mm -hmm. but because it is very harsh for the animals, we normally don't use it. We mm -hmm. use now the agricultural lime that even farmers use in their plantations, oh. like kahawa plantations and such stuff. Mm -hmm. So you want to say rabbits' urine is very strong? Yeah, it is very strong and very ah. corrosive. And that is why if you see my mabati on top here, in a kulu you had in your urine. Just the vapor of it. Mm -hmm. It's very corrosive, yes. Yeah, I hope it won't affect us here. No, 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 too soon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to see them. Mr. Sasa, welcome. They are just mm -hmm. here. They do lead us through. Yeah. So here, Maureen, how many rabbits do you have? Uh, 650. 650? <laughs> yes. Whoa! <laughs> All this place has rabbits. All this has. I can see! There's black, there's white. Yeah, we have we have New Zealand white, mm -hmm. we have the Dutch, we mm -hmm. have the California, and those are the most popular that many farmers in Kenya have. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow, California. Yeah, yeah California white. Which one? The common one. Which, so like this white one now? Yeah, no, like this one is a New Zealand white. Mm -hmm. Like that one is also a New Zealand, but it's an earlobe type because the ears have fallen. Mm -hmm. Yes, now like you see now for the rabbit, you just hold them by, as in at the back here, uh -huh. so that they don't feel the pain. So oh. you don't hold them by the ears. Oh. Yes. <laughs> oh, like this, and it's so calm. It's so calm. So this, this one is? An earlobe. An because earlobe. you see now, the, as in the ears have dropped. Mm -hmm. They're normally not so popular, but I've had farmers mm -hmm. who oh, normally come and really mm -hmm. ask for them. Oh, for these particular ones? For this particular earlobe. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yes. Hey, but Maureen, rabbits, <laughs> how did you start rabbit farming? Ah, rabbit farming, I just began as nothing when I was I was entering into Form 1 by, by 
by accident we lost our parents in an accident oh, so my auntie and my uncle now took us in so when we used to stay with them in Karen that time when us guys would as in come out from school and stuff would eat rabbit so pole pole I began as in having as in this meat to be tasted and stuff so pole pole I grew a uh, a taste for this rabbit. So I said when mm -hmm. I finish as in university, I'll think mm -hmm. about this biashara. So did you study anything related to agriculture in university? No, 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 I didn't study anything <laughs> to rabbits. At Jomo Kenyatta in Juja, mm -hmm. I, I used to study BCom. Mm -hmm. I had specialized in HR. Mm -hmm. It was something very different from, from farming. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now I, when I finished my final year is now when I had saved 5,000 because I had motorbikes on the road and stuff. You know, mm -hmm. I was hustling here, there, here, mm -hmm. there. So now with, those, with that 50,000 mm -hmm. is now is not what I took now to buy my five rabbits with, mm -hmm. with, with 50,000 at our home in Kasukari. So 50,000, how did it grow to this? I mean, there are a lot of rabbits. How did it happen? Ah, now that time, because that was in early January in 2015. So mm -hmm. now by the time I was graduating in now July, mm -hmm. is now when now I had seen, now, now the five had now become 60. Mm -hmm. Then now is when I saw now there's a potential, there's marketing and it's an untapped market because many Kenyans hadn't mm -hmm. learned to appreciate this animal and seeing it as a viable business. Mm -hmm. So I said, let me go into a Bishara that doesn't have many people. Mm -hmm. So now I went to family, friends, relatives asking for a loan and stuff, but no one could help me. But now my sister, because she's an engineer, mm -hmm. she took a loan at her, at her job and she gave me 200 50,000 which are now built all these that you can see here. Wow. Now Maureen you've already built these structures here you've prepared. Now tell me about the management system of rabbits. How do you manage them? To manage them is tough because you know you must keep fast you must keep uh, proper records. Mm -hmm. You must also as in maintain cleanliness and stuff because this animal is very clean. Mm -hmm. So if you don't maintain cleanliness they, they, they normally as in die from very small small illnesses. Mm -hmm. Yes so, so managing is as in just Good, good record keeping mm -hmm. is what tends to be like the challenge. So you, you started with the small kids, the kittens, or you you bought a grown one? Based on your capacity and your structure and where you are seeing your vision, mm -hmm. I asked them at times to begin with a mother and children which I sell for 5,000. Mm -hmm. There's a pregnant mother who I sell for 3,000. Mm -hmm. There's a young one who I sell for 1,000. So it just depends with the customers. Mm -hmm. So Maureen, are rabbits heavy feeders and what do they feed on? Uh, as for rabbits, they just consume, you know, these as in animals that mostly as in feed on refugees and stuff. So they just mm -hmm. mostly eat hay mm -hmm. and plenty of water and now manufactured feeds. Mm -hmm. Now we call them pellets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, otherwise they are very high consumers of pellets if you decide to just fully as in feed them on pellets. So what is the most expensive thing when you're managing these rabbits? Ah, uh, the most expensive thing I think is just the feeds. But you see now, I decided to see it, instead of it being a challenge, as mm. in not to see it where by now us guys farmers, as in can make our own feeds. Mm -hmm. Because nowadays with how technology is moving and stuff, now people are, are, are becoming more accustomed to making their own stuff. Because mm -hmm. you see, if I'm making my own feeds for my animal, I'll make sure I'm giving my animal nothing but the very best. Mm -hmm. And the very best also means that even you, the consumer at your plate, you're experiencing the very best. So Maureen, even before we talk about the benefits of uh, rabbits, Tell us about these particular types that you have here. Which ones are these? Uh, here at my farm, we have all types. We mm -hmm. have the New Zealand white, we have the California, we have the yellow, as I mentioned earlier on. Mm -hmm. We have the Dutch. What's the difference now? So now, in rabbits, we have three classes of rabbits. We have the small size, the medium size, and the large size. Now, the small size are those types of rabbits that are normally, like the dwarf, they're not so popular. Mm -hmm. Then we have now the common ones, which are now the medium-sized rabbits, which are now in many farms inside the country. You see, mm -hmm. us rabbit farmers in Kenya all picked our breeds from gong owned by the government. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to find a farmer going out of the country to buy their own, as in, mm -hmm. breeds. Yeah, of their own breeds, exactly. So mm -hmm. now those are the types that are many in many farms. Mm -hmm. So mostly like the New Zealand, the California, the, the Dutch, those are the medium-class rabbits. Then also have the big size, now the large size rabbits, mm -hmm. like Akina, Flemish Giant, Akina, mm -hmm. Angora, and the, and the rest. Mm -hmm. But those ones, to us farmers who are farming this thing for business, we we don't like putting them because th those animals take so long to mature number one and then number two they also consume so much and then number three that time that we have change are gonna so much of manure as compared to the meat mm -hmm. and we are in this for the meat so we keep a few of them just as pets mm -hmm. like i got a farmer in mokoren who came and bought one for five thousand mm -hmm. just as a pet mm -hmm. so those big ones we keep them as pets so what are the benefits of having rabbits uh, the benefits of rabbit farming is that number one is in, if you just maintain 
cleanliness mm -hmm. this is as in it's a quick money making business because you make money from everything from mm -hmm. their urine and see that is a byproduct so someone like me I have a customer who normally buys a liter for 100 Kenya shillings mm -hmm. and that customer has been taking for the last one and a half years mm -hmm. so it's and what is it good money for I uh, see this urine is like a repellent mm -hmm. it's a folium mm -hmm. so it is used by farmers in their farmers you farm then you know it is organic yeah. Yeah, so it is even better than, than those pieces and stuff that we buy in the in the shops. So how long is the gestation period for rabbits? After every three months, because you're doing it commercially, this rabbit can be delivering. So in a year, you'll find a rabbit like this one has given birth almost four times or five times in a year. So if the, if the first time at are like eight, the next time seven, so in a year at least you're going to almost 40 mm -hmm. and the mother is still there. Wow. Yeah, so they, they multiply very fast. So you must have those cages ready mm -hmm. because they breed very fast. They are prolific breeders. Maureen, with all these uh, rabbits that you have here, which one commands the market or which one is the best breed? Uh, you see, as in Kenyans just began becoming aware last year about these rabbits. But for the last three or four months, I've had the Kenyans really asking for the Angora type, mm -hmm. the, yellow, the yellow type, mm -hmm. and those are kind of flavors, just because those are somehow unique. As in, you see, it is white meat, so as in, it is, um, as in, it's good maybe like for old people, those with low sodium diets, for ladies, if you want to, to need to, not to, as in, to lose weight and stuff. Really? It is low in cholesterol, it is low in calories, it is low in fats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not like other, as in, lives to like pigs and stuff, so it is very good also for the ladies. Mm -hmm. How much do you sell your rabbits? A uh, rabbit, they normally range, for an example, now a rabbit like this one together with the children, I normally sell at 5,000. It's like a set. I sell it as a set. Mm -hmm. I sell it for five thousand. Then I also have pregnant rabbits who I sell for three thousand five hundred. I also have you now young ones who I sell for one thousand. Mm -hmm. This cost may look like it is high, but it's because we also buying these feeds at an expensive price. But once we start making our own feeds, it will now become cheaper. Are these rabbits prone to diseases? Ah, uh, yes. So <laughs> <laughs> they do. You see, these rabbits. If you don't take care of them, as if you don't keep their cage clean, like mm -hmm. this cage for an example, and yeah. I, I normally clean every day with a disinfectant. The same disinfectant mm -hmm. that you stepped in as you are coming in mm -hmm. so if you don't clean their cages and stuff they're very prone because they fall sick and then even now with this change of weather mm -hmm. as in it affects as in at times their lungs and stuff so they begin sneezing they begin mm -hmm. having those chest issues and stuff so yeah, if you, if you, you can just feel them See, we check those males over there. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, I don't know which color. Can I choose the color? Uh, <laughs> it says black. This is Whoa. a Dutch type. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they are very delicious. But they, it is similar to chicken. Oh, exactly. Can I hold it? Yes, you can. <laughs> Whoa, it's, it's called what? A Dutch. It's a Dutch. <laughs> yeah. And the one you're holding? No, this one is a, a Palmino. Oh, Palmino. Yeah. <laughs> but I like this one. You so, see these rabbits as in came from this country. It's not like this one came from Dutch. Oh. And that's why it was called Dutch. Oh, a Dutch one. Yeah, exactly. Huh. So today we are going to have a Dutch meal. <laughs>
welcome back to Kilimo na Biashara. Right now, Maureen is going to prepare for us a sumptuous rabbit meal. Maureen, tell me, where do we start? Uh, Linda, you see with rabbits, for an example, you see these inside parts, mm -hmm. as in other farmers, they normally don't as in, as in eat them. Yeah. But, but just similar to chicken, because this is similar to chicken, yeah. for us, we normally eat them. No, like this one is mm -hmm. the liver, mm -hmm. so we normally just cut it. And then we also fry it together as we fry the the rabbit as well. Yeah. But then we also have other parts now like as in these lungs and livers, this the, inside here and the heart. Mm -hmm. Now these ones are normally not eaten. Oh. Now in case maybe you have a dog or something and it's it just, just disposed. We've removed the liver, the lungs that are necessary. Now let's dissect this. Mm -hmm. Put it here and mm -hmm. shall begin dissecting. Look of things I see your your knife is blunt. You can use mine. Ah, thank you. <laughs> it was getting a little bit blunt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, and the meat looks so soft. Ah, it is white meat, this one. It is white mm -hmm. meat. It is very soft. Yeah, it, it is, it is. It's farm fresh from the farm. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> it's very fresh. So this is the one that you brought from the farm. Yes. <laughs> So this is white meat, similar to chicken. So why do you say rabbit meat is superior as compared to other white meat? If you compare the bone to meat ratio for a rabbit, mm -hmm. it normally has more of meat to bone. Mm -hmm. So the best time to slaughter a rabbit is once they are five months old, because at that time they have less of fat as compared to, to meat, because Kenyans want to eat healthy, no one wants to eat fat. I still hold it. No, 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 I, know, I think that we are done. So Linda now is, is just to just like boil it as in to tenderize the mm -hmm. meat now before we get to fry it. Okay. Yeah. So we just put them there. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. nice. I think that's it, that's it. Mm -hmm. Then you just now you, you cover the lid, then we now put it in the chicken. Oh. I put it in the jiko now. Yeah. <laughs> this one is smaller. No, I think this was a big one. So how many minutes? Uh, for about five or ten minutes. Oh. Yeah. Five or ten minutes we'll be having it. Yeah, we, we shall now be ready to fry it. Okay. Yes. Okay, so we wait. We wait for ten to five minutes. Then we're good to go. Then it's just frying mm -hmm. and off, off we are What eating. can it be taken with? Uh, with, 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 with maybe as in uh, with, with fries, with rice, with ugali, mm -hmm. with smoky more. It just depends with, with, with smoky more. <laughs> it's very scrumptious, by the way. So how much does a kilo of rabbit meat retail at? Uh, like for me, because I have my own customers, I normally sell mine at a thousand package. But if you go to the local supermarkets and stuff, you'll find them faring between 550 and 950, mm -hmm. depending on the supermarket of choice. Which is your biggest market? You've said the supermarkets, you've said the small retail shops, but which one really is your market? Uh, my biggest market me currently is just, you know, as in ever since, as I said, thanks to the media, as in I got my own customer base. So mine just, as in come to my farm, others, others I sent to Nairobi and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. For poultry farming, the secret is always the feeding program. What is the secret for, for rabbits to, in order to have quality meat for rabbits? Mm, I think that's, you, you just have to check on the feeding and if you, and if you know you, you are like a month or so to slaughtering, mm -hmm. you now as in pump your animal with as in those manufactured feeds mm -hmm. because they gain more weight. Because see, these manufactured feeds have very high levels of crude protein, crude mm -hmm. fat, crude fiber, and those are the components that make your rabbit very delicious. And, those, and that is why the rabbit meat becomes superior to chicken, to goat, to beef, to turkey, yes. Mm -hmm. You've been in the business for five years now, which means you're such a pioneer. What are the hits and the misses that you've come about when you in this venture? Uh, if I was beginning right now, or, or like the way I normally tell my fellow farmers, this is number one, I normally tell them to check on the housing because it is very important. Mm -hmm. Because if you kick off the wrong way, then you then you are destined to fail. Mm -hmm. So you must kick off the right way, first beginning with the structures of the house, then the rest will follow. Because if you have good structures, mm -hmm. then that issue of ammonia and stuff will not be there. And if you have good structures, mm -hmm. you, you can easily e even export your meat. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that's the first thing that I'd first ask my farmers to do. So also check on the wind direction because it brings them pneumonia and such like stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes. How many kgs does a typical rabbit really weighs? Uh, 
Uh, you see now in rabbits we have the live weight, that is when that rabbit is alive and then you have the dead weight. The dead weight is now the meat, not like the ones we are preparing here. Mm -hmm. Like this rabbit, when we were when we were about to slaughter it, we weighed it with you and you saw it was around 2.4 kg. Mm -hmm. And once it became meat, now dead weight, you saw it became around 1. So rabbit, they normally lose like half. Mm -hmm. So that is, is what we, because half of it goes to the carcass like the head and whatever. Mm -hmm. But you see even that carcass is not wastage because mm -hmm. what normally happens is that these manufacturing companies, Nowadays they consult us farmers and we sell to them this like the hooves, the head and whatever. Mm -hmm. Then they mix them as they make the dog the dog food. Where do you get the type of breeds that you have here? I normally go to the National Gong Centre owned by the government and then I normally get fresh meals from there every three months mm -hmm. to avoid inbreeding and also urge my fellow farmers to do the same. Maureen, you're so passionate about uh, rabbits. What is the best thing that you like about these animals? I just love us in the way they are simple to keep, they don't make noise. If you come to my farm, you can't even think I have rabbits mm -hmm. <laughs> and they are just quiet and they are easy to keep. Mm -hmm. And it's a good venture because it's a venture that it, it doesn't have many people, so yeah. I'm unique. Mm -hmm. People come from very far, others from the States, mm -hmm. others from, uh, from, from France and stuff. I've had visitors here, Wazungus, mm -hmm. Denmark, so yeah. I'm honored because it is a unique venture. And I urge my fellow youth also to follow suit. So Boreen, where do you see yourself in five years? In five years, I have a very big, as in a very big vision, like a very big dream. Like I wanted to first finish this house in honor of my mom and my dad. I also wanted, as in, to expand my my rabbits, as in as in the rabbits itself, because I have 1,000 rabbits at, at at now. But I want to build structures that now can hold even 5,000 rabbits. And also, I would also want, as in, not be able, as in, to make my own feeds because it becomes cheaper. As in, to also like offer classes and stuff because because nowadays I normally train as in fellow farmers and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a big dream, and to also be able to now export this meat outside the country. So five years is not a short time. I can say you are a pioneer now. For a farmer who's intending to venture into rabbit farming, what would you advise? Uh, my advice to my fellow farmers is, is, is number one is that don't think of it as a quick money making business number one and you must be patient number two and you must also be willing to do the time and to to do their work, it's, it's not an overnight success. If you look at successful people, they have, take, they have taken years to get to where they are. So just begin with the right structures, begin with good quality breeds, and you're good to go. And then also because we have someone like me who's a pioneer and others, consult, so it's always good to consult. Because there's no need of your rabbits are dying and you cannot consult, yet we can share ideas, because that is how you grow. You see, for the five years, I have learned so much through my fellow farmers, because farmers call, others come, so you learn a lot. I'm totally impressed, five years, great milestones and you're saying this is just the beginning it's 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 just amazing to see young people venturing into agribusiness i'm impressed congratulations <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> linda after yeah. we check on the rabbit okay i'm sure by now it must be ready yeah i hope it is <laughs> yeah it, it, was, it has to be. you see it even as in changes as in its color mm. so now it's tender to the touch it's so white. It is, it is white meat. It's enough. Then maybe now you can you can kindly pass me the kitchen with the ginger. Okay. Pour all of it in, yeah. eat together with the gun. Mm -hmm. By now, this is overdue. One hour, let's see if it's ready. Yeah, I think it's also ready. Mm -hmm. Atta to Agalia to one. Wow. Ah, Linda, see what you, yeah. I serve you. Yes, yes, yes. With yes, the yes. judge. Please. All right. Please serve me. I'm so anxious. <laughs> now I want to dig into this. Meat. Can I wash my hands? <laughs> yes, you can. Oh, Albert, come wash our hands. Oh, Albert is already here. <laughs>
this is a big ugali. Yeah, very scrumptious. Hey. Made the lu- the luya way. I cut a piece in the luya way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah cut a slice and Let enjoy. Farm fresh. Big meat. Yeah, <laughs> very nutritious, very delicious. Mm, mm, it it mm, tastes mm. like no other. Mm. 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 Maureen, I'm totally impressed. <laughs> it is very delicious, and you said it's nutritious, and you you said you can put kebab. Yeah. Uh, your your kebab. Samosas, Samosa, everything. Sausages, sausages yeah. everything. Yeah. Wow. It, it is very delicious. And you said it's white meat? Yes. It is white meat. Now you can put another thing on your white meat list. I hope you've enjoyed today's show of Kilimona Biashara. It has been rabbit farming. Thank you for watching the show. My name is Linda Koskei. <laughs>